For this lesson, we're going to work with special angles. Um, to be honest with you, it's exactly the same as the trigonometry you did in grade 11, but except for uh, degrees, it's now in radians. So last year, we talked about two special triangles. So the very first one is derived from an equilateral triangle. Okay, And the side lengths of the equilateral triangle are two units. And what we did was we split it in half. So if you split it in half, like the way I've shown you, you will get this right triangle here. So the hypotenuse of this right triangle is two units because it's the same as the uh, side that you had from the equilateral triangle. Now this length is half of two, so that's one. But what about the third side of this right triangle? The third side of this right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the third side, and you'll get root three. This angle here was the same angle as you had here for the equilateral triangle. So this one, in, hmm, it's all three is 180, so this one must be 60. But wait a minute, I'm not gonna write 60 degrees. I'm gonna write pi over three. And this third angle, you can solve for it by uh, taking all uh, taking pi and subtracting by pi over two and pi over three. But this angle here, I'm hoping you realize, must be complementary to pi over three. These two angles here must add up to 90 degrees. So if this is 60, this must be 30. But we're not going to write 30 degrees, we're going to write pi over 6. So that's the first of two special triangles. And that's going to help us find the exact values when we work with the trig functions. And then the second special triangle is a, is a right isosceles triangle. And we're going to say that the, the lengths which are equal are both one unit. And if these are one unit, the hypotenuse can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. And the hypotenuse is root two units. You could do the math, but indeed it is. Now these two angles here must be congruent because this is an isosceles triangle. So if you think about it, it's 45 degrees, but wait a minute. Yeah, we're working with radians now, so it's pi over four. Pi over four. Awesome. So with the two special triangles, we can fill in this chart, just like we did last year. So pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. So I'm actually going to try to fill in this table without looking at the triangles. So on the test, of course, you can draw the triangles, but we really don't want to keep looking back at the triangles every time we do a question. You want to just you know, write the ratio without referring to the triangles. It's just too time consuming and tedious. So sine of pi over 6, we need to know that's 1 half. Sine of pi over 4, you can say it's 1 over root 2, but we prefer to rationalize the denominator, so we're going to uh, multiply by root 2 over root 2, which means 1 over root 2 is quite simply root 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 3, you can look at the triangle and it's root 3 over 2. Now, these three we're going to memorize. Okay, but I'm going to show you a strategy such that you don't need to memorize cos pi over 6, cos pi over 4, and cos pi over 3. If you know sine pi over 6, sine pi over sine pi over 3, you should know what cosine, uh, well, we should just know these three cells. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go back to degrees to help with that problem. So I'm going to say sine 10 degrees. I don't know what sine 10 degrees is, but I have a really cool relationship. I know that sine 10 is exactly the same as cosine 80 degrees. Now that sounds very strange. How did I know that? Well, you know what? I want to prove that to you. So let's go and check with the calculator. Sine 10, cos 80. My conclusion was indeed correct. So, how about, let's try a different angle. Maybe that was just coincidence. Can I do this again? Uh, let's do sine 25 degrees. Sine 25 degrees. Hmm. 
cosine 65 degrees. Let's see if that works. Oops, uh, sine 25, co 65. Wow, what do you know? So let's try one more. Sine 83 degrees. I'm going to say cos 7 degrees. Sine 83, cos 7. What do you know? So we need to come up with the, the relationship here. There's definitely a relationship between 10 and 80 degrees. And that same relationship exists between 25 degrees and 65 degrees. And of course, for 83 degrees and 7 degrees. So I'm really hoping that you can identify the relationship. So these two angles are, or these pairs of angles are complementary angles. 10 and 80 add to 90. 25 and 65 add to 90. 83 and 7 add to 90. They're complementary angles. And in fact, that's what cosine means. It's sine cosine sine of the complementary angle so if you're really good at sine then you should be really good at cosine because cosine comes from sine so if someone asks me I'm going to go back to the degrees for a second so if someone asks me cosine of 30 degrees what's complementary 30 60 so cosine must cosine 30 must be the same as sine 60 and what do we say sine 60 is root 3 over 2 so because pi over 6 and pi over 3 are complementary these two ratios are the same and if that logic checks out then these two ratios must also be the same now cos pi over 4 well pi over 4 what's complementary to pi over 4 remember pi over 4 is 45 degrees so that's root 2 over 2 these two must be the same because pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is pi over 2. Now, for this last column, you also don't need to memorize it. If you know these three cells, you can generate these three cells based on the fact that cosine is sine of the complementary angle. Now, how do you generate these three cells? From what you learn in grade 11, tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. That's the quotient identity. So tan of pi over 6 is sine of pi over 6 divided by cos of pi over 6. And if you do the math, you'll get root 3 over 3. Tan of uh, pi over 4, sorry, tan of pi over 4 is sine of pi over 4 divided by cos of pi over 4. Root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, that's quite simply 1. And then last one is root 3. So these relationship, relationships are really nice, but at the end of the day, when you do enough practice, you'll be able to memorize it. Okay, so what we have here are all the relationships that you learn from grade 11 trig. So the definition of sine, cosine, and tan. Uh, cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Secant is reciprocal of cosine. Cotan is reciprocal of tan. And of course, a circle centered at the origin is defined by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So something I didn't write here that you should also know from grade 11 is the CAS rule. So starting from the fourth quadrant and go counterclockwise, CAS rule. Okay, so everything is, all is positive in the first quadrant, sine is positive in the second quadrant, tan is positive in the third quadrant, and cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. All right, so let's try to work this out. Determine exact values of the six trig functions um, for an angle of three pi over four. So if I rotate three pi over four, where am I located? I'm really hoping you realize that you're in the second quadrant. If your rotations three pi over four counterclockwise, you're in the second quadrant, okay? So we really want to know what the reference angle here is. So if you remember from the diagram we did earlier, the reference angle is pi over 4. So 
we have sufficient knowledge to answer or find the exact values for all six trig functions. So sine of 3 pi over 4, cos of 3 pi over 4, tan of 3 pi over 4, no problem. So sine 3 pi over 4, because the reference angle is pi over 4, I just need to know what sine of pi over 4 is, which is root 2 over 2. Cos of 3 pi over 4 should also be root 2 over 2. Tan of 3 pi over 4 should be 1. So I know the magnitudes of these three ratios are root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and 1 respectively based on the fact that the reference angle is pi over 4. Now be careful though. 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant. So I have the magnitudes of the ratios correct, but the signs are not. So this is negative and this is negative based on the cast rule. Okay, so since I have sine, cos, and tan, I can easily find cosecant 3 pi over 4, secant 3 pi over 4, and cotan 3 pi over 4. I'm just going to take the reciprocal of all these ratios. So this would be root 2, negative root 2, negative 1. And just to mention this again, this question is exactly the same as what you would have done in grade 11. So instead of 3 pi over 4, you, were, you would have written 135 degrees here. But the math and the, the concepts are exactly the same as before. Okay, sine pi over 3, cos pi over 4, tan 3 pi over 4. Um, so find this product and subtract it by this product. Whew. Okay, so just a bunch of ratios here. Okay, sine pi over 3, quadrant 1, easy peasy. So this is going to be root 3 over 2. Have to know that very well. Pi over 4, quadrant 1, you have to know that very well. Root 2 over 2. 3 pi over 4, ooh, second quadrant. So I'm going to put a negative right away because tan is negative in the second quadrant. And the reference angle is pi over 4, so the ratio is 1. The magnitude of the ratio is 1. Cos 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant. So I'm going to put a negative again because cosine is negative in the second quadrant. And uh, 2 pi over 3 has a reference angle of pi over 3. So the magnitude of the ratio is half. Two more to go. Sine 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant. So I'm going to put a negative right away. Sine is definitely negative in the fourth quadrant. The reference angle is pi over 6. So the magnitude of the ratio is half. Tan 7 pi over 6, that's positive because 7 pi over 6 is in the third quadrant. I don't have to put that plus there, but I'm just going to do it anyways. Uh, and the reference angle is pi over 6. So what's tan pi over 6? That's going to give me the magnitude of this ratio, root 3 over 3. So the approach for finding the ratio of each of these is the same. Find the sine, whether it's positive or negative, depends on where the angle is located. And of course, the trig function. And the magnitude of the ratio depends on the reference angle. So it's a two-step process. Figure the sine, figure the magnitude. Figure the sine, figure out the magnitude. All right, so simple math here. Uh, root 3 over 12, simplify that, minus 3 root 6 minus root 3 all over 12. Done. Um, some students find this a little too hard. They can't process, really you're doing two steps in one. So I will show in one more way of doing this. So sine of pi over 3 cos of pi over 4, tan of 3 pi over 4, cos 2 pi over 3, sine 11 pi over 6, tan 7 pi over 6. Okay, so like I said, some students find this, um, find the first way of doing it a little too much because you're finding the magnitude and the, the sine at the same time. So another strategy is changing it to a quadrant 1 angle. 
So if it's already in quadrant one, you don't have to do anything. So sine pi over three, keep it as that, uh, sine pi over three. Cos pi over four, keep it as cos pi over four. But for tan three pi over four, what you can do is change it to a first quadrant angle, but add a negative. Because you change the second quadrant angle to a first quadrant angle, which you can certainly do, but be careful, understand that tan three pi over four is negative and everything in the first quadrant is positive. So you can push it to the first quadrant, but don't forget, sometimes you need to put a negative sign. So cos two pi over three, I'm gonna change it to the first quadrant, but I have to make sure there's a negative. Sine 11 pi over six, push it to the first quadrant. Tan seven pi over six, this time I don't have to put a negative sign because tan is positive in the third quadrant. So I push M in the first quadrant, which makes the, the, the mag, finding the magnitude of the ratio easier. You don't have to go look for the reference angle. You, you, you did that over here. So you're, you're breaking down the steps. You don't do everything in your head. So just, just write it down. So you'll get root three over two, root two over two. This negative came from here, by the way. You know, I'm just gonna write it here so that you don't get confused. I'll do the simplifying in the, in the step after. And you get the exact same thing. On the test, if you were allowed to use a calculator, you should really check the answer. And it's so easy to check. Just punch it in. Now, when you punch it in, be careful. Right now, my calculator is in degree mode. You can see that the, the D is highlighted. So if you want it in radian mode, you gotta push mode, 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 mode. So one for degree, two for radian, and three is for gradient. Um, that's a, another unit for uh, ang angles, uh, which I can show you later, but uh, we want in radians right now. So sine of pi over three, please put it in brackets because it's sine of pi divided by three is very different from sine of pi over three. You want the angle of pi over three, not pi. Cos of pi over four, tan of three pi over four, minus cos of two pi over three, sine of 11 pi over six, tan of seven pi over six. Okay, so that numerically is approximately that, and then check your final answer. Exactly the same, as expected. Okay, if it wasn't the same, then that's not good. But yeah, now that we uh, see that numerically, the calculator is generating exactly the same value, I'm feeling pretty confident about what I wrote. Okay, I'll do the next page uh, on a separate video because this video is getting a little too long.